My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And this is the Ahuna Torah YouTube channel. And it is a Shabbat. It's a Shabbat edition. Hey, everybody. How are you out there? I hope everybody is well. Thank you guys so much for hanging out at this little tiny Ecclesia. We are proud to be a part of this. We are so happy that you guys are family with us. And there is no better family than the family of Yah and the kingdom that is coming. And this is the place that we should be. And... Hello, everybody. How is the chat out there, Nicole? Who, who do we have? We got lots of people Let's in Let's say here. hi, Nicole. Go for it. All right. We got Carla. We got Glenn. We got Lester. We got The Grand. We got Rhiannon. We got Zachary Z. We have Sylvia and I'm going to say Sade. Sad? Sade? S-A-A-D. Sadie? No, it's... Uh, it's just S-A-A-D. Sade. Sade. Sade, maybe. Okay, well, thank you guys very, very much for joining us out there. We really, really appreciate it. Let us open with a quick word of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, you are the creator of all things good, and we cannot thank you enough for being a part of our lives and for giving us the Torah and for giving us your son. Father, you have graciously given us a set of guidelines, and Father, we are here to partake in them. We are here to listen to them, and Father, we are asking that you will dwell with us, that your presence will be with us, and that you will allow the Ruha HaKadosh to be in our words and around us, Father, where you have said we're more than two are gathered. You are with us, Father. We ask that you will be with us through all of this, and you will guide your people. You will take us where you want us to be, and Father, we are seeking this kingdom. We are seeking your son, and we are seeking your ways, and Father, there are no better ways, and we we lift up your name, we lift up your ways, and Father, we thank you for everything and for everyone that is gathered together here, Father. I ask that you will bless them, you will bring guidance to their lives, that you will dwell with them and you will walk with them and, and know that we are seeking you through everything that we know. We thank you for everything and we ask this in the name of Yahusha. Amen. All right, everybody, it is a wonderful day. It is a Shabbat, and it may not be a wonderful day where you're at, but it is a wonderful day where we are at, and it is a Shabbat. And so that makes it a wonderful day for all of us, and it is the sixth month 
It is the seventh day, and it is the 27th day on our Creator's calendar. All right, so how is everybody out there? Um, how's, how's the guys in the chat? Lester, we are praying for you, brother. Our hearts are with you. Um, much love. Anyone out there, if you guys have some sort of prayer request, please put them in the list. If you have a uh, possibly a description or a target that we can help pray, we are so happy to do so. And we always ask that you guys will keep us in your prayers. Um, that is the best defense that we have against the forces of Hasatan and all the demons and things that are taking us is prayer. And um, let us begin. This is what we do every Shabbat. And we are, we are, um, I guess we're not struggling with this, but Nicole is kind of struggling with this because we are towards the end of Deuteronomy. And this, I guess, as happy as the Shabbat is, this is kind of a sad Shabbat because this is the last time that we will be in the Torah on the Shabbat. We are almost out of Deuteronomy and 180 some days ago we started this and we had no idea where it would take us. We had no idea what it would encounter and we have picked up a lot of you guys along the way and there's people out there like we truly consider you guys out there our family and our kin and um, we talk to you guys, a lot of you guys on a day-to-day -day basis, the grand and um, there's just a lot of friends, Zachariah Z and Rhiannon and, you know, all of you guys that are that are out there, we, we do love you guys and we have a huge heart for you, especially Lester. We know that you're, you're struggling. You're going through some trying times and always seek Yah, right? Seek the kingdom, seek the ways of Yah. And even, even though we're struggling, it feels like sometimes we're snapped into a crack, into a sidewalk, we will get out and Yah will take care of us through all of this stuff. So as we go through this Torah, we have a, a commandment that says we need to write these on our hearts, minds, and souls, the doorposts of our house and everything. And so the best way that we can do this is to recite them and to go over them and to get them to, um, I don't know if it's called muscle memory, but at least memory that we would know. And when we run into situations that you would need them, then you will pull out this muscle and you will use the Torah. And for those who've never heard this before, um, we do have a roof that sounds really bad. And we also have 27 baby chicks that are down our hallway. So when you hear what it sounds like a um, peaceful screensaver or like one of those things where the birds are chirping and things are just going, that is actually our house. So my, my apologies for anything um, and any bad net that we have. And oh, any dog that says hi. Yeah, and any dog that <laughs> breaks out and says hi, there's always a chance some crazy madness can happen here. So we're always trying to contain the dogs, contain our house, contain the kids at the same time. Kate, how you doing? Good. You, you got, I saw a little frown there when I said contain the kids. I, I saw your eyes go down. Is that not good? We don't have to contain the kids? No? They, nobody can see you shake your head, but how you doing? Everything good? Are you awake? Yeah. You don't seem very awake today. Jade? I'm awake. Everyone good? Good. Cool. Eli, Good. you all good? All right. Well, let's go. Let's begin on this. The very first commandment is um, be fruitful. Uh, I'll start off, be fruitful, and let's get, let's continue on. And I want to slow down towards the end when we're in around the hundreds because that's when it gets uh, more complex or more, um, more commandments that we haven't shared yet. All right. Go ahead. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have many over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Don't eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Gary, who has covenants, laws, statutes, and commandments. Guys, you notice this? I'm going up the page here. If you guys notice this commandment, commandment 11, it goes on and on and on and on. I haven't counted these, but we had 37 last 48. count. 48. 48 times, and we are not through with Deuteronomy yet. The largest by far, without a shadow of a doubt, the largest command we have anywhere in our scriptures is commandment number 11. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commands. Guys, that is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, what we should be doing because it has been reiterated so many times. All right. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrian. Sanctify all firstborn of Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven image. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to not. Keep the Shabbat. And here we are. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not cut anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. 
If a man steal cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yeah, whose laws for criminals? You shall stone the witches, wizards, and mediums. And again, I will reiterate, there is an asterisk right here. Because these are things we cannot do in the land we are in, or we will end up in the clink. <laughs> do not lie with beasts. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress the stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false reports. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteous against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Okay, 57 and 58 are the same. This is for temple anointing oils, which we actually get the recipe for, and we are not to use them or on a person. And we're not supposed to make them, actually. Do, do not eat the fat. Do what you are you say you are going to do. In return, what is your neighbor's? Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. And there are la dietary laws, and we don't eat the piggy. Women's time of separation. There's laws for all of that. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do, here, not, here. do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do, do not deal falsely, or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie, or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not divert your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool unless you want a vibrating, crazy life. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Don't be a beta male, folks. This is a one I just want to touch on real quick. Guys, it, if you want to be a masculine man, grow a beard. Grow, grow a beard out. In the jungles that we are at, I can completely see why we have beards. Your face will get totally annihilated. Someday, if I ever do shave, I'm going to look like I'm eight years old. My face has never been weathered. I have never seen any kind of affliction to my, my little skin under my beard. And in fact, I could shave and none of you guys would even know who I was. So the beards are important. Yah designed them and he loves beards. There's something about the beard. That's why we're not supposed to. It says don't round your beard or the corners of your head. It didn't say anything like take a straight razor and shave your face off, right? Or is it a sin to shave, yes or no? Anyone? The only reference we had to like beard like that is when they were like got their beard shaved off in David's times, his people, and they went into Jericho. Uh, and he's have... like, don't go, don't come back to Israel, go sit in Jericho until your beards are grown back, and then come back when your beards are fully grown. Uh, we also have like when people are unclean and stuff, they go and shave their beards and all their hair off. So the question is, is it a sin, yes or no, to shave your beard? I think it's more of an honor thing. I agree. I agree. We don't, I don't have. Th I don't think it's a sin necessarily. Now nah, you could you can do it if you want to be a uh, smooth face. You know what we call um, people without beards around here? We call them women. Um, so let's continue on. Eighty nine. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measurements. Do not walk in the manner of the nations. Feast of first fruit Shavuot Omer count. Feast of trumpets Yom Teruah. Feast of Sukkot Shemi Atzeret. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. Kill him. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you shall give him another. We pay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins, Yahuwah, and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazarene. Wear Z's on the, four corners of your, on the four corners of your garments. Important stuff, guys. Laws of whoever touches a corpse, and there are laws. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. Poor of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. When in the land, the laws of a murderer and victim's families. And again, this is when we, we post it, when it's in the land, because you can't you can't be the uh, revenger of blood in these days, or you will be in far more trouble than what it is. Do not take or add away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. 
Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy grave images. Do not make an, an idol of Yahuwah uh, as the pagans do to their Elohim. Struggling there? Yeah, a little bit. All right. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do uh, to their Elohim. I struggled too. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do what? Not Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I, I thought it was like, do, do what is right in your own eyes. I'm no, like, what? Okay, do not, do, not, do, not do, do what is right in your own eyes. Do what, is, what is that? Guys, what is what is uh, right in your own eyes? If you think something is good and you like, so start doing wrong things, then uh, that's not right. What about Christmas? That's not right. Easter? That shouldn't even be right in your own eyes. Well, like, how, how do you know? Well, here, here's the thing. It, during, when we were in paganism, when we were in Christianity, it was right because baby Jesus, they said, was born on the 25th of, of Christmas or December or whatnot. Um, and that is why we had that. And that's why churches bring in giant Christmas trees. Now, what are the giant Christmas trees? Asheroth bowls. Asheroth bowls. They're graven images, right? They're, they're Nimrod stuff. And we should not be doing such. All right. Uh, do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Kill the false prophets in the land. You can't in the land. Them, right? right. Yeah. Again, if not, half of YouTube would probably be killed. Yep. Okay. Do not listen and kill. Do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are family members. Hard words to hear, right? And this is the people, even in your own family. If your own family is trying to turn you away from Yah, again, this is in the land. But we can definitely separate separate ourselves from those who do not want to be in in covenant with Yah. Okay. If a city has turned away from Yahuwah, burn the city and kill all the inhabitants. Again, asterisks. Yeah, the whole world. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of, cl uh, of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. The laws of the end of the seven-year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. Plant all. Yeah. Any man or woman that has done wicked things in your gates, they shall be taken out in stone. And again, these are the ones, and this is this is why this commandment list is very hard for us to dial in, because this is why we ended up with things with asterisks on them, because we are in captivity, we are outside of the land where we should be, and the 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 laws of the land are completely different, right? And their laws of the land are totally okay with witchcraft and sorcery and all this kind of evil stuff but we put this in there because we it's not right right if, if we were in the land we would get the wicked things away from us and unfortunately as hard as it is to hear we would kill them and sometimes things must be killed okay there must be two or three witnesses hearken unto the prophet yahuwah has chosen prophet test of deuteronomy do not remove your neighbor's property line how to deal with a false witness among torah keepers First child to get double portions. The law of the wayward son. If a man is hung to death, he shall not remain all night. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. Okay, and this is these are the commandments I want to slow down just a little bit on because these are coming out of Deuteronomy, all out of Deuteronomy. And these are the things that if you don't think your creator cares about you, then you simply need to read these commandments, right? It says if, if your clothes are lost and somebody finds your clothes, as big of a deal as that is to the guy who's lost his clothes, a lot of people won't care. So it is very important that our creator even cares about the, how your clothes and that you have clothes, right? And if you take a pledge of somebody's for raiment and you don't give that back to him and they're cold in the night and they cry out to Yah, he's going to hold that against you. All right, continue on. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a woman, nor a man wear what pertains to a man. I should a say a woman. Wow, Sorry. so we type with that. But let's let's get that out here, right? A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, and a man should not wear what pertains to a woman. Um, and we do have a little typo right there, but we went over this yesterday or last time, uh, or whenever we did go over it, and there was a lot of questions because we are on in the middle of a farm. Nicole wears pants. Um, we have 10 pit bulls. If she didn't, she would take a ride with the pit bulls uh, pretty much all the day. So what is this exactly? How, how, do we, how do we do this command today? Is if, if, you, if, if a woman is in pants, is that a sin? No. 
what do you okay? As long what, as they're women's pants. What do you mean? How do you what, what's the difference? Pants. Okay, so how would you know if it's a woman's pants or not? What if your woman ended up with a pair of man's pants? She had nothing you else can to wear. Tell. They're different. Okay, they're so different. What qualifies? Where is the evil in this? It's when you try to be a man, uh, right? If you're not a man, or if you try to be a woman and you're not a right. woman, right? That's it. Yes, that is where the evil is. If you are attempting to um, shave your head, put on a baseball cap, wear men's shoes, and you're a woman, and try to, you're trying to look like a man or a a a guy. You know, it's it's weird to say, but he puts on lipstick and high heels and a wig and starts trying to look like a woman. I've never seen a dude that looks like a woman. I've never did. Even the guys that say they're women. You can see they have this giant Adam's apple, and that thing is, I don't know what's wrong with that. Maybe it's GMO stuff. I don't know. All right, continue on. If you find a bird's nest with mom and the babies or eggs, take the babies but not the mom. If you build a new house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. And again, these are these are odd commands. They're not odd. They're odd to us because a lot of us have what they call, down here, we call them um, four water roofs. Or we either have two water roofs or four water roofs. And that essentially means you have either two sides of your house that's at a pitch and the water runs off of it. But back in the day, they did not. And so Yod did not want you to have people dying on the land um, for crazy things. Because you could simply put a railing around the top of your roof and people aren't going to be bailing off the top of it. So these are yet again the commands that show how much our creator loves us and doesn't want us to fall into itty bitty weird things. Okay, the laws for the accuser and accused and purity of relationships. Okay. If a man has a relationship with an engaged woman, both should be killed. Okay, so there it is right there. And these are the these are these why the Christians love these laws on the cross. Because this essentially says that if if your man or your woman goes out and cheats on you, whoever they cheat on you with and them should be killed. Simple enough. You kill them both. Okay. Uh twenty this is one thirty seven. Yep. If an engaged woman is raped, she is not charged with a crime, but the man shall die. If a man forces himself upon an undefiled woman, he must pay the father and take her to be his wife. All right, you know, this is this is commandment 158. This was like one of the probably the weirdest commands. We, we sat around, we discussed this one for a very long time, and I'm not going to go against the, the, the wishes and will of our creator, but it is a strange, strange commandment. Right? It, it says, if a man forces himself upon an undefiled woman, he must pay the father and take her to be his wife. It just seems like a strong, strange commandment. I, I don't even know where that came from or why that would be. But essentially, if, I, I don't know. I guess that's how you get a wife back in the day is or this, something. It's just like consensual. Is this sort of yeah. this is this is not. This was. This seems to me like it was a rape situation, and so I, I don't. I don't get it and she this is the the difference between this command and the other one is this woman is is uh she's undefiled right and so she's not engaged she's, she's not, not engaged and the other one the one was engaged so the guy dies so this is one of these odd commandments that we definitely probably need to have a sit down with moshe or maybe y'all can explain it to us at some point and i'm sure we'll go oh okay That's that makes odd. a lot oh geez <laughs> we didn't see that but anyway continue on do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Okay, do not use dirty money. Okay, this is, this was a commandment, and I did not understand until Tyler um, Robbins, uh, our, our homeboy who was over there, he explained this to us. He said back in the days um, in like Greece and Ath the, the different places in, in Athens, Greece and different places, prostitution was an absolutely huge thing. Everybody was doing it. So there, like you said, okay, there were, there were a lot of pimps. And they would take the pimps to, they would take the money from their, their ill-gotten receives. And Yah does not want any of that money. Oh, we could right. not, we could not understand this. We were like, wow, if somebody's engaged in prostitution, we should kill them all. Well, this was somebody that was probably coming into uh, Torah or something and he was doing that kind of stuff. So again, not every command makes 100% um, understanding to us. Okay. Hold on. Zachariah Z says the one about where the man forces himself upon the woman. Yeah, what do you got? He says the father can refuse to give the daughter to the guy. Right, but what happens to the guy that just raped his daughter? I don't know. He should definitely be killed. I think we should just kill him overall. <laughs> if they're doing this kind of action, you just kill But him. we don't have laws. We can't do that. That would be your, what was right in your own eyes. We can't do that. <laughs> right? Because we have, we have a set of instructions. We have to follow these instructions. And even though it is an odd thing... It's it's very very. It doesn't say the dad can't beat the living snot out of the guy. I mean, the, she, they may go to the wedding altar with a couple black eyes and some broken bones, but 
um, you know, that's that's what it says. So um, hopefully the guy will be an honorable man after he was a, a very honorable person, just a horrible human being. Okay, um, let's continue on. 161. 161. You may eat from your neighbor's vineyard or grain, but you may not take it out of the field. Um, it doesn't say you can't take it out of the field. It says you cannot put a sickle to it. I said don't put it in a vessel. Don't yeah, put it in a sickle. Carry away. Yeah, don't, don't carry it away. That's, that's right. the okay. other one. So, so if you're hungry, you go and eat, right? You just go and jump in a field, and, and that is yet Yah's ways of taking care of the poor and broken because it is super, you could you could definitely go have a full meal, just jump in a, in a thing, and you're not breaking, you're not stealing anything by taking a little bit out of the guy's field, which is amazing. Okay, 162, the law of divorce. It is there. We have a law for the man to divorce the woman, but we do not know of a law where a woman has the ability to divorce the man like this. I don't know if it exists, um, and, and we were kind of stuck on this one as well. So, because there are definitely very bad apple dudes, and bad apple dudes will take your whole family into the pits of hell. All right. Um, newly married man should stay home for one year with his wife. Do not take a person's meal son for a pledge. If a man is found kidnapping, he shall die. Yeah, again, that's in the land, but I mean, that's that's the right thing. If you're if you're transporting people and you're stealing people, you should probably get some rocks to your skull. Okay. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset. That it was his pledge. That's just like basically don't break into someone's house. Well, it, it no, it, it says give the man. On, it basically, what this means is it means you're giving a guy some honor, right? If you are a guy who's collecting somebody and you break into somebody's house, you violated their respect and their privacy and their their security, and that's what Yah is saying not to do. And if the guy doesn't have it. If the guy, does, if you owed money or the guy owes money, whatever, and you march in his house and take something because you feel that it's owed to you, that's not what it's about. You're not supposed to go in there. And so it gives people a bit of uh, safety. All right, next. Do not oppress a hired servant. That is poor and needy. Okay. Um, every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do, do not go back for the forgotten sheep if the, in the field if... It, for the stranger, father, some widow. Wow. The, wow I Hooked on that. phonics did not make it to your uh, mailbox. Who's your teacher? He should be banned. No, I messed oh, up. Oh, that was me. <laughs> I, I got, I got tripped up here because of, uh, it just says do not got, so I got tripped uh, up on. Uh, it what? was my typing. Yeah, I got. That's the problem. Took me a Okay. I should uh, do some editing. Okay, well, that's fine. You got to, like, run through this. Okay. You cannot give a man no. You cannot give a man. <laughs> we're sounding real literary here. No more than 40 strikes for his judgment of his wickedness. Yeah, and that's another uh, hillbilly typo here. Um, you cannot but, give a man no more than 40 strikes. So just use a comma. You cannot give a man. It said no more. That sounds it's like really, really you should not give any a man more. more any than... more. You, should not give, you cannot give a man any more than 40 strikes. That's the correct English. Okay. All right. <laughs> do, not, do not muzzle your ox when he treads out green. If your brother dies and has a child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. If a woman comes to defend her man and grabs the other man's privates, you shall cut off her hand. You shall have correct weights and measures. Okay, and again, on 173, which seemed like a really odd one, this was if she literally injures the guy and he's unable to have offspring, is what I believe Brother Glenn had um, brought us to the attention on this. And so... These are some strange things that we don't know. All right, so Nicole, what is the chat room going on? How's it, how's it going in there? Um, it's good. Um, one person said in the, how'd they say it? Sahad? Sahad. Um, they had to leave, but oh. we're glad they're here. Goodbye. And I don't know how to say this other person's name. Baruchin? Okay, what do they say? I don't know. Just saying that if the woman that's raped, she lost her opportunity to be anyone's wife. So maybe that's why he's required to restore her honor by marrying her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. Very, very, those are, those are things we don't know. And yeah, those are maybe the things that we're like, oh, yeah. So, um, but the dude should still get some spankings for that. Definitely. Some, some, something. All right. So here we are. We are in Deuteronomy 29 and we are ending, getting the, the end of this. And so... Um, thank you again for our digital family hanging out with us. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. And let us begin. Is everyone ready? Yep. yep. Okay. These are the words of the covenant which Yahuwah commanded Moshe to cut with the children of Yashrael in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he cut with them in Koreb. Okay. What does it say right there? What did, that, what did this just say? So basically he's talking about this is the covenant he made with the people. 
Uh, actually, he said this is a covenant he made, a second covenant. This is not a first covenant. This is a second covenant is what it says. Right. right? Beside the covenant, which he cut with them in Korev. Okay. So this is a secondary covenant. And what is this covenant? And Moshe called unto all Yashrael and said unto them, Ye have seen all that Yahuwah did before your eyes in the land of Mitzrayim, unto Pharaoh, and unto all his servants, and unto all his land. The great temptations which your eyes have seen, the signs, and those great miracles. Yet Yahuwah has not given you a heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. Okay, now what does this say, Jade? For everybody paying attention, yep. Jade, you paying attention? Mm -hmm. Okay, what does it say there? It says that you you've seen what Pharaoh did, and you're not you've seen everything that he did. You're not supposed to punish the people that are in the land that are your strangers. Mm, that wasn't what I was doing. So if I can get everybody to pay attention, I would really appreciate that. I know you guys. I know there's dogs under your feet. It's it's, it's, it's a struggle. Okay, don't don't worry. Just leave him where he's at. He's good. Um, this is what we were trying to do. What it says right here, it says Yahuwah has not given him a heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. That is something that we have seen with Pharaoh. We've seen it with people over and over and over where Yahuwah is completely in control of all this. You got any issues, Kid? You sure? Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, it, it is the hand of Yah. Yah is the one that will harden your heart or unharden your heart. And so, I don't know what... I don't, you know, I don't know what it takes. I, I, I'm sure I've been on the receiving end of a hardened heart before, and Yah is building up for a greater, um, you know, example of stuff. But this is what Yah can do, and so this is probably what we should all understand: is even if it's if, if we're not seeing things that are right, Yah could harden our heart, and it could be, you know, a sign from Him. Okay. And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you, and your shoe is not waxing old upon your foot. Ye have not eaten bread, neither have you drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am Yahuwah Elohekim. Okay, so I think this is an interesting point. So it says you have not eaten bread. What do we call manna? I don't know, flakes. Well, I mean, they, we, knew that they, we knew they took manna and that we knew they ground it up, right? right? And so they made it into a batter, and they also make cakes out of it. That's how they make matzah, right? So is that not bread? Mine says grain. Grain. Okay, so you, but... Right, so he would have, that's probably right. Is your guys say? Mine says bread. Yeah. Yeah. You know, bread. But I, I would I would think that manna would be considered bread, but I think grain would be a better thing because they wouldn't have had grain. They had Yah's grain. So I think grain is the right word for this. Um, so, yeah, you have not eaten bread, neither have you drunk wine or strong drink. Now, do we know this, right? We did. I didn't know this until we actually got to Deuteronomy, that they had, up until that point, they had no wine or strong drink. Did we know this? I don't. I think we knew this. Really. So there was up, so they went 40 years. I mean, years. it never says that they drank strong drink or anything like that. Well, here's the thing. Remember Aaron's kids? Right mm -hmm. after they burned themselves up with, with the strange fire, Yah gave a command that says you are not. The Levites can't. The Levites can't. can't drink while they're in the service. Right. But so here, it's very weird because he says, neither have you drunk wine or strong drink. Well, this is the people of, this is the people that aren't Yishlites, and that was before the 40 years even began. So are we to are we to say they drank nothing during this forty years or not? Well, they drank water. Well, of course, water. But I'm talking about strong drink. Why did why did the Levites end up why did the Levites end up getting? Uh, well, they didn't have any vineyards. They weren't st long, staying in one place long enough to have. You can vineyards. you don't need vineyards. You can take fruit and you can throw some sugar well, in there and you can make some like kind of squawky. And stuff, you know, right. But, yeah. Well, right. And so that that I was just curious. I don't know. Does anyone in the chat room know? Um, Zachariah or anyone who's in there, maybe Brother Glenn, is he still in? I think so. Brother Glenn, anyone know if they drank? Because I, I didn't know that they had not drank. Um, but because we do have laws about drinking. Okay, seven. And when ye came into this place, Sycon the king of Chesbon and Og the king of Bashan came out against us unto battle, and we smote them. And we took their land and gave it for an inheritance unto the Ruvium and to the Gedium and to the half tribe of Manasseh. Guard, therefore, the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Okay, so there's a commandment right there. Eli's our, our scribe on this one. Since Nicole's running the chat room, Eli's running this. So that is the first one, and that will be number 48 for guard my laws, statutes, and commands. 10. Ye stand this day, all of you, before Yahuwah Elohekim, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers with all the men of Yashrael, your little ones, your women and your stranger that is in your camp, from the hewer of your wood unto the drawer of your water. 
then you that you should enter into covenant with Yahuwah Eloheka and unto this oath which Yahuwah Eloheka cuts with you this day, that he may establish you today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto you your you Elohim, as he has said unto you, and as he has sworn unto your fathers, to Abram, to Yitchak, and to Yaakov. Okay. What is what is he saying here, everyone? Okay. He's saying that Or yeah. Jade. Anyway. Uh, so he's basically recapping on it. Basically recapping and said he gave a covenant to like people that everyone in the land, everyone like your strangers, your wives, everybody, the family members, everybody should follow the laws. Everyone should guard it, not just the leaders, everyone. Okay. We get this conversation all the time that people are like, these commands are for the people back in the day. Well, it says a sojourner and we are sojourners because we will be in the land someday. So those are for us as well. Okay. I'm about to break this entire myth of it just being back in the day people, right? Okay, let's read on. This is something awesome here. So if you guys listen up, this is very important. Neither with you only do I cut this covenant and this oath. Okay, what did that verse say right there? It says, neither with you only. So basically, not it's not you along with other people as well. Okay, now who are these other people? They are the strangers. Oh, hold on. But with him that stands here with us this day before Yahuwah Eloheinu and... Also with him that is not here with us this day. So basically the future generations, right? Everybody. And, and Nicole said for future Israelites, right? Yep. That is your version. So this right here says this covenant that we're talking about right now that was way back in the day does not apply just to the people that were standing there, but it applies to him, all of us, to this day. This is to all of us. We are the people that he's talking to. So we can we can bind in this covenant. How do we bind in this covenant, Eli? By keeping the Torah. By keeping the, the law, statutes, and commands. Verse 16. For ye know how we have dealt in the land of Mitzram, and how we came through the nations which ye passed by. And ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away this day from Yahuwah Eloheinu to go and serve the Elohai of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that bears gall and wormwood. Is that a command? Okay, let's look. Jake, a command? Um, I don't think so. He's just um, saying you saw what their abomination, you saw all their things. NIV says, make sure there's no man or woman or clan or tribe among you. Okay, so lest there be, okay, so lest there be any man among you or woman so whose heart turns away. So this is, um, mine says lest, yeah, mine says lest there should be among you man or woman. That mine lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away this day from Yahuwah Eloheinu to go and serve the Elohai of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that bears gall and wormwood. Um, I think he's just saying, this is a I judgment. Think saying, I think he's saying, the, if you don't what, do this, this is what will happen. Um, because anyone else out there? Yeah, I don't see that as a command in this one. And also, does 14 go under there as uh, one tour for the stranger in the evening? Yeah, 14. Uh, 14, neither with you mm -hmm. only do I cut this covenant and this oath. No. I don't know. 14, 15. I mean, that's what it, it's qualifying. Who needs to do it? That might be under the guard your commandments. Or I don't know. Um, this is where it gets a little tricky here, but with him that stands with us today before Yahuwah, I don't, I don't think so. We'll discuss this one here in a bit, Eli. I don't think it does though. Nicole and I usually go through these and we spend an hour, at least a day after we're doing this stuff, trying to dial the stuff in. Okay. I don't think 18 is as well. And it come to pass when he hears the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart saying, I have, I shall have peace. Though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst. Okay, so this is talking about the people, right? This is talking if the people go among them and the people will have a, they, they basically, they bless themselves and they, they say, I, I'll have peace even though they're not seeking Yah. 20, Yahuwah will not spare him. But when the anger of Yahuwah and his jealousy shall smoke against that man and all the curses that are written in the sepher shall lie upon him and Yahuwah shall blot out his name from under heaven. Okay, so what, what curses are we talking about? Sorry, if the, you turn away the previous to... chapter. Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. No, there's there's a ton of curses there, and um, it's it's a bad news. Bad news to, to go against Yah. Okay, 21. And Yahuwah shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Yashrael, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the Sefer of the Torah, so that the generation to come 
of your children that shall rise up after you, and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sickness which Yahuwah has laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that it is not sown, nor bears, nor any grass grows therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Amorah, Adma and Zelvian, which Yahuwah overthrow in his anger and in his wrath. Okay, let's, let's break this down real quick. So, um, w right out of the gate, again, this is for, if the, the curses are so that all the people, even from a faraway land, are able to see that Yah is, is the one doing this. And it says also, so that the generation to come of your children, that would be me and that would be you guys, right? Because technically we are the future generations of that wherever it is. Okay. Um, 24? Yep. Even all nations shall say, wherefore has Yahuwah done thus unto this land? What means the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of Yahuwah Elohai, of their fathers, which he cut with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Mitzrayim. For they went and served other Elohim and worshiped them, Elohim whom they knew not. Okay, not, oh, sorry. And whom he had not given unto them. So, anything different here, guys? Do we have any commands, anything at all? Mm, no, no I think he's giving them all a warning. I think it's more of a warning where he's like, don't go serve other mighty ones. Don't, don't go away from the Torah or you're, everyone's going to see that I'm going to smite you like I did Sodom and Gomorrah. But it's very clear the commands are for other generations. It's not for the justice generation, right? right. We it's saw that. we got to remember this in Deuteronomy 29 because people are saying that that doesn't apply to us. This is not, this is not us. Okay, uh, 28? 27. 27. Right? And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in the Sefer. And Yahuwah rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secrets of Yahuwah Elohim are given to his children and their sons forever and ever that they may observe every word of the Torah. Okay, that's that's this is where I want to halt on this. It says the secrets of Yahuwah Elohim. You guys say secrets? I said the hidden belongs to Yahuwah. Okay. The secret things. The secret things, right. And and Right, and that's not the Torah because the Torah is not actually secret. Um, it says right here, guys. It says it's given to his children and their sons forever and ever. Where are we at that we would want to toss this, these laws on the cross? Where are these at that we would want to, when has forever and ever ended? I guess a long time ago. Yeah, I guess it would have been a long time ago, forever and ever, for all generations. But that only meant like... 10 generations. 2,000 years. Yeah, 2,000 years. So, guys, when you read the Torah in, in context, there is no place that you would put the law, statutes, and commands away from us. We would want to keep these for all times. We want to, to hold these close to our heart. We want to embrace ourselves in them. We want to embrace our family in them. And this is what we want to use to navigate these lands that we are on right now, especially these times that we are in, in a world that is just passing by us very, very quickly. All right, that is the end of this. Nicole, what do you got? Um, the grand said about the drinking of the hard wine or the liquor. Yeah. She says fermentation may have been harder to accomplish in the wilderness. That is possibly true, but I can tell you that uh, even back in the days, you can make fermentation is super easy. You just take it's. Um, I mean, we. But maybe I, they I, just couldn't carry it. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe it was, yeah. No. Been too much. For sure, it's easy to ferment stuff. We can accidentally ferment uh, just about everything here. And it does taste a little funky, and you don't even mean to. So, um, okay. Well, I think that is everything. Does anyone have anything out there? Anyone in the chat room? Is there any prayer requests or anything we need to talk over? There's one gal. Her, and again, I don't know how to say her name. Baru Bar. Breuchen. Give it a try. What do you got? Breuchen. Okay, Breuchen. Maybe. maybe. Um, she says that her sister. Let me go find this again. It was a while. Ago. Okay, my sister is dying with brain cancer and had an hour-long seizure last night. They're doing wow. an EEG today. Um, her daughter Alexa is 28, trying to hold everything together, and her father and brother are both bipolar and out of control. Okay, yeah, so for you guys out there, if you guys can pray, um, definitely pray. Yah's, Yah's prayers work, and um, they, they really do. And he, if it is his will, his will will be done. So um, the squeaky will gets the oil, as they say. And so we want to be on the heart, mind, and soul and memory of Yah at all times. And let's seek the kingdom where it is able to be found. Um, 
Zachariah, right. these kids, they're sick. They're uh -oh. throwing up. So uh -oh. he says we'll take prayers for sure. Okay, yeah. Let's, let's pray for Zachariah Z and all the kiddos there and for Mama. And that uh, you guys are getting some sleep because poor Mamas never get sleep with sick kids. It's just, uh, I guess we're lucky to have Zach and, and uh, Rhiannon in here because they're probably just really, really tired right now. So thank okay. you guys very, very much. And the way to say that name is Broichen. Broichen? Breacher. That's a beautiful name. That's a cool name. Very cool name. Okay, well, thank you guys very, very much. We are going to end like we did last time. We're going to put a little... We didn't do it last time, but somebody mentioned it. We should do this. Emissary. Emissary of Elohim said this, so we are going to say goodbye to all of you. Fearmonger, he came oh, in. Fear he says he missed the first 40 minutes. He's going back to watch. All right, all right. Fearmonger, much love, brother, and much love um, to everybody that is out there, and we will end with something just like this. Anyone have an ending? All creation? All right. Sure. All right, guys. Love you. We're out. So long.